Hey you guys, just a couple of announcements this morning. Um, how beautiful is that? Look at the snow. Isn't it nice? I'm trying to put as positive spin on that. <laughs> People can't really drive in the snow, so it's great. Okay, just a few announcements. You guys, today is, um, I've had a few questions. Today we have Base Camp at 11, um, Home Partners of America, turning renters into transactions. You guys, that's another benefit that you can have for your buyers in today's market, especially with the interest rates, so you don't want to miss that one, okay? So make sure you're there. Um, Summit is, oh my gosh, I forgot what day is coming. The 13th? March 13th. March 13th. You guys are the fourth summit. summit. Yeah, so you don't want to miss that. Make sure it's in your calendars. And then you guys, the Easter event, people are signing up on it left and right. So we already have like quite a few, I think about 15 people that signed up. We have about eight booths. You guys, it's a great way to connect with your SOI. If you hesitate reaching out to your referral-based business, it's a great way to create that now. So make sure that you're signing up and inviting all of them there so they can have um, see you in a different light and you can engage with them a little bit more, okay? So just reach out to um, Sharon at the front desk and she'll get you more information. She can help you get signed up, but the email has gone out a couple of times. Um, they wanted me to remind you that um, the compliance call is on Friday at 11 a.m. They're going over more contracts and they're going over something specific on addendum. So you don't want to miss that. It's on Fridays on Zoom at 11 a.m. Okay, so don't miss that. You guys, tomorrow's book club, we started to read Max Out Your Life. Tomorrow's going to be the first day that we're going over a couple of chapters. It's a small read, but it's powerful. So get the book. Come join us in book club tomorrow. And that's about it. Um, yes. Is Space Camp Zooming? Yes, it will be Zooming too. Okay. And then we'll try to record and send that out, the so information, so it's going to be a presentation on the projector screen, but we will send out the information as well. And if you guys have questions, you guys can always reach out to Heather Barker. She'll give out that information when she's here today, later. Um, okay, let's talk about a gratitude or a win. It's Wednesday. You well, have wins. Have... You just had clothing, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> Is that not? Come on. I, I missed it already. Yeah, you did? Okay. <laughs> Good job. Even George now, see? I've been closing. There we go. Y'all woke up today. I mean, that's a win. That is a win. It's a great gratitude to have. Opening those two beautiful Actually, eyes. Special shout out. Is that Jocelyn right in front of you? Yes. Both of those guys. Yeah. I gave them a little one, two. They are they, they were awesome. Yeah, Jocelyn was there at call call booth last night too. Awesome. Making calls. Great job. Jocelyn. Jocelyn? I had my closing yesterday. She had her first nice. closing yesterday. <laughs> great job. And she's had many more to come. Hey guys, George, saw you. Hey. Hey. Yeah, congratulations, Jocelyn. That's awesome. All right. Good to see everybody, especially this group over here. Did you see who's behind you? <laughs> Do you guys even know each other? No. <laughs> Two of my favorite guys right there. They don't even know each other. Matt, meet Justin. Justin, meet Matt. All right. Hey, so one of the most important things, you know, one of the things, one of the most important things. Okay. How many of you want to buy more investment properties or an investment property? Okay, great. Here's, here's my thought to you, though. There's two things I always talk about. I'm just going to put this up here. In the top right hand of my dry erase board, one that I had a long, long time ago, I have these three things listed up there. And these three things that I have listed up there were up there for so long that literally I could not get it out of the uh, the, the dry erase board. It's not this, this, this uh, I don't know, whatever this is made of, but it literally permanently stayed there. And this is what was up there. I had health oops, and vitality. I had money. And then I had it divided into two things, cash flow. And then I had assets that, of course, eventually produce cash flow and then relationships. And on those relationships, if I if, if I was to label those for you guys, I would say that your relationships with yourself, with God or source, whatever you want to call it, your intimate relationship and your family. I'm going to slash put kids, and then I always say every one else. My opinion is those are the three areas of your life that no matter how long you're on this planet, you're going to simply be working on. And I would have them up there, and then I, so I was 
coming back to how many of you want investment properties? Well, right, you want more cash flow, you want more assets. But the one thing I've realized in my career is that of all the things I've bought and sold, uh, even whether it's even this company, some of the most important things I've built have been the things I've been doing with my, my, my sphere of influence. So sphere of influence, centers of influence, sometimes they're called, some people call them just their database. But I just want to point out <clears throat> that the thing I've seen a lot of people get themselves, especially in markets like this, where they get themselves in trouble with things like buying assets such as investment properties, is that they suffer greatly because if there's ever a cash flow need. And so one of the things that you have to make sure of is that you have to make sure that there's cash flow. And yet the challenge is, is like, we'll call internet leads, we'll call for subway owners, we'll call expired. But Jackson, if I was to tell you the number one mistake I made in the first five years of my career was it didn't work my sphere. In fact, what I often talk about is that your sphere is often this, it's important. And certainly this isn't a new concept, especially if you've ever read uh, Seven Habits for Highly Effective People, but important, but not what? Not what? Important, but not what? No one knows. Maybe you guys need to read Seven Habits, Highly Effective People, but not urgent, right? It's not, it's, it's important. So people will look at this and go, man, it's really, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, I need to work my sphere. I need to, I need to make sure that I, I, I talk to the people I know and I need to build that. But the problem is it's not urgent. And so people don't pay a lot of attention to it. So there's that part of it. Then there's the other part. In fact, if you went to the summit, Jessica Terry talked about the fact she just didn't want anybody that she knew to have to help them because she didn't want to come across as that salesman -y person. And so she would rather work with someone she didn't know than, than, she, than she did. And I want to get a little bit into that, but I just would challenge you that as you're moving through this, just recognize that if you will make it to where I, well, I asked you about investment properties is because I believe that the number one asset you can build as a real estate agent in this business is what you do with your sphere. I've seen more people earn more money from their sphere than they ever will in their lifetime, in most cases, than they will with investment property. Now, that doesn't mean don't buy an investment property. It just means put some perspective to the fact that you need to build this sphere of influence. It doesn't matter whether it's Isaac who's 20 and now you're 20, right? It doesn't matter if these two guys are 20 or whether it's Who's the oldest in here? Rick, would that be you or me? I qualify. I, think I'm, I don't know. How I old are you, Greg? 67. All right. How old are you? Well, I'm in my 60s, so. All right. All right. You got me. All right. All right. Let's just this. Right. 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 The three old timers, the three older guys in here. It doesn't matter where you are because what I've recognized, if you will take this as serious as anything you do in your business, and we'll talk about, I'm going to go in more detail here in a second. It will be the most important thing that you build. The single most important thing. It will get it to where you have more cash flow. It will be to where, uh, and just write these three things down. Let's just talk here. Number one, you know that if you're effectively working your sphere, three things are happening. Number one, your prices are going up. If you're effectively working your sphere, your price ranges are going up. Number two, this is a simple thing, but the business is getting easier. You know, what I'm hoping when I hear like Jocelyn having a closing is that it, her business eventually is getting easier, not harder. And so the nice thing about your sphere, if you do things right, is your business should be easier. I, I probably shouldn't interrupt you, but there, one of the things I listened to this morning was this is blog on, um, on doing videos and things that people that are really good at that, right. they don't even have to close when they were listing a point. This is what they were saying. No, I, I, I would agree to that. You, you know, it's already it's already a, yeah. a, a done deal. And you can muck it up if you say Correct. too much. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's my whole so point. That, that's my whole point is your business too. gets easier. What you're saying too, it gets, yeah. Every that, part of it gets so easier, you right? They're just ready. You have less competition. You have more people calling you. You call them. They're excited. I mean, everything about it should be easier. And then the third is this, is, uh, make sure I say this right before you, let me say, let me say it before you write it down. And that is, uh, people, I read this, but people are not asking you, people are not, are not asking you if you're still in real estate. And so in other words, if you meet someone, they go, Hey, Isaac, what are you up to? Well, that means that something's off. It means that you're not properly working your sphere. Now, the problem with things like this, like, is that sometimes the first thing that I, well, gosh, I have so much I want to share with you. Let's just start with this. If you do the, if you do the right things with your sphere, what I know is that you'll get a 10 to 15% rate of return. 
What I mean by that is that as a minimum, what I want to make sure of is that when I made this objective, like it doesn't matter whether it's Jackson as example or Isaac or 20, and I know most of you, you may say, well, I don't know for sure if I do, but I want to make sure that by the end of this year, at minimum, there is at least 300 plus people in your sphere. Now, you may say, well, how do I do that? Well, Isaac, how many contacts did you make yesterday? Approximately, give or take. 50? And how many appointments? Okay. We had a little chit chat yesterday about that, Matt. Anybody familiar with Grant Cardone? Yeah. All right, I can't say what he says, but I won't say it. But I was getting after him. Have you listened to him at all? No. All right. That's right. All right. So 300 plus, but good job on the contacts and good job on the appointment. But my point is, is here's where I found one out of every 10 people that you talk to, you can add to your SOI. Now, I remember I was working with Doug Carey on this, and this is year, this is like, I don't know, five, six years ago. And I remember with Doug, I said, hey, dude, add to your sphere. Well, Doug, being as analytical as he is, what does he do? He starts tracking these things. And a year later, he comes and show me, shows me this big pie chart that he's created. And he did this just again last year. And what he showed me is the first year after he did this, so he did it the first year, and the next year, because he thought, because, of course, he'd gone to other trainers, and they had said, well, no, that's ridiculous. You don't add people to your sphere that you don't know. And I said, dude, there are going to be people that you meet about one out of ten. So here's a good example, Isaac. Did you meet four or five people, or just let's keep it right at five, that's 10%. Did you meet five or people yesterday that you had a good connection with? That you're, they were really friendly? They were really nice. They didn't hang up on you. Was there at least five of those people? Yeah. Right? So you've got to get in the habit of adding one of those people about every 10. Now, I recently was talking to Mike Hancock about this. He said, my goodness. He goes, I'm finding that it's like three or four out of 10. Hey, the better your skill sets are, the more people you're going to add. And so the thing is, is that you've got to get really focused here, <clears throat> that you get at least 300 people in there. Now, again, 10 to 15% return, Jocelyn. What does that mean? Well, that means you should be doing 30 to 45 deals that should automatically happen if you're working your sphere properly. And the key is that I keep going back to, it's important, but man, it just doesn't feel like it's that important. And so that's, or sorry, that urgent. So that the challenge is, is that you've got to really, really recognize that just because it's not urgent, just because it's not panicky, just because it's not stressful, doesn't mean that it's not important. It's the single most important asset that you will build. It's the thing that will have value. If you ever said, I want to sell my real estate practice, what are you going to do? Most of, some of you are like, well, I have a, I have a practice. I, I could sell them my Red X account. I could sell them my Boomtown. I could sell them my Sync account. Uh, those aren't, you can't sell those. That's, that, that's not a practice. If you were a doctor, an attorney, a CPA, you can, if you're successful, just like my very accountant who is selling his practice to his, his associates and compadres in, in the business, he's selling it to them. And I've watched, I've watched, I watched my father-in-law before he lost his life to liver cirrhosis and alcoholism. He sold his dental practice. And my point is, is that you can sell these things. And the thing is, is that if you don't have anything to sell, well, then, again, I go back to if your business isn't getting easier, or if you're not increasing your sales price, and people are still saying, yeah, so now what do you do for business? Are, are, are you still in real estate? That means you guys are really messing it up if that's happening to you. Now, some of you are newer where you're letting people know what you do. I, I'm, I'm cool with that. But, man, if you've been in this business a year, that shouldn't be happening. It means there's a problem. It means that there, you haven't recognized that this is the most important thing. And let me just be candid. You want to be free? You want to not be dependent upon anybody, any team leader, any team, any, any uh, internet leads? Any, this is how you get freedom in this business. Don't underestimate the magnitude of what it can create. Now, the key, the key to getting business from your sphere is consistency. So write this down, consistency over content. 
I want you to get a lot more serious about consistency than content. Now, I'm not saying that you don't have to, you shouldn't have both. And if you're committed, you'll have a little bit of consistency or a lot of consistency and some pretty decent content. But really recognize, say, man, what's the most important thing here? Sometimes we'll get so, so concerned about what the content is, we forget that the most important part of this is consistency. That's the most important part of it all. Okay. So with that being said, I just want to go through just a little bit of a list of the things that we should do. Now, before I get into this list, the changing point in my mid-20s, after about five years of being in this business, royally screwing up my sphere, not working on, not calling them, afraid of whatever I was going to, I mean, just what I realized is, is simply this. Before I write this list, let me write this up here first. Bring value to the relationship. That's it. What's valuable? Guys, as a general statement, you guys should be reading or looking consistently at a handful of things. I'd be looking at things like Inman News. I'd be looking at like Riz Media. I'd be looking at Realtor.com. I'd be looking at the Wall Street Journal. I'd be looking on the HUD site. Know something about this business. Master your craft. And every day, well, I'm telling you, if you would just spend, this is what I used to do for years, I still do it, but when I was right where you guys are in selling, I would just do this 10 minutes. Jocelyn, do you know what an expert you would be just after 10 minutes a day, 50 minutes a week, and your whole focus was just on, hey, what's happening in the real estate world? Now, the other thing you could also make sure of is I'd tell you to make sure you know your stats, especially when you call your sphere. How many homes are on the market? How many homes are selling? How fast are they selling or not selling? What's the amount of inventory? Have some common sense stuff that you should know. You know, approximately what are interest rates as an example. So I just would I challenge you to become an expert so that you can bring value to the conversation, value to the relationship. And, and I can just tell you that if you will bring value in your conversations and what you give and send, you will create a connection, what I call reciprocity, the law of reciprocity. If you give enough, if I bring enough value to Isaac or to Urbana, if I bring you value, you're going to say, oh, I want to give you some value back. Me, I want to work with you. What do you see on websites today? Boy, 10, 15 years ago or whenever it was, man, that's longer than probably, was it 10? Yeah, people are registering about 10, about 15 years ago, I think still. But man, when you would register, Greg, for anything, let's just say in the last decade, it used to, a decade ago, you have to put your phone number, you'd have to put your email, your blood type, you know, like you have to get all this information. They're like, I'm not giving you anything great for my website until you give me all your information. What is it today? What is it today on the web? I will give you everything. And eventually you will register. You will give me your name. You will be forthright with. Why? Because I'm bringing you so much value. And so then you feel this obligation, even on the web. You feel this obligation, this person has helped me, interacted with me, conversed with me, brought value to me. So law reciprocity says, I'm going to use Greg because of it. It's no different than if you talk to a human being. Bring enough value to another human being, they feel obligated. It's as simple if I give a birthday gift to Urbano, what are you going to feel on that's my birthday? You're going to say, bring me a big gift, right? Right? <laughs> Huge gift, right? But my point is, if I give him something, he's going to feel like giving me something. That's just how it works. And sometimes we forget this. But again, I go back to the single most important thing. Spend 10 minutes in just real estate a day. Boy, an hour, basically an hour a week, just studying the, 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 the industry, the market, what's going on, what's ahead. You will sound like an expert within a, with, with basically within a week. Because most people aren't even spending an hour focused on real estate. Your clients aren't focused on what's the industry doing? Where is it heading? What are rates doing? What's the Fed doing? What is the mortgage rates doing? What's the 10-year treasury bond doing? What's the HUD doing? What's the newest programs? What's the stats? How many homes are for sale? How fast are they selling? How long are they on the market? They don't, bring, they don't know any of that. So bring value. All right. So here's the, so we don't run out of time. So here's, here's the list. If you want to get a 10 to 15% rate of return, then I'm going to recommend doing these things. And these are not in any particular order, but I'm telling you, make sure that they happen. 
You want to do 30 to 45 deals, get your sphere up to 300, get the adding people. Actually, one last thing. That right here, it just go like this. Hey, Isaac, really appreciate our time. I love visiting with you for a few minutes. And this script is in the book. Would you mind if I touch bases with you periodically, updated you on market conditions, and asked to, to or found out, find out if you knew of anybody who was thinking of buying and selling real estate? Would you mind if I did that on occasion? And someone, like I said, one out of 10, when he feels that connection, how often do you think they're going to say, yeah, no problem? Almost every time. Great. Hey, let me confirm your address. Let me confirm your phone number. Again, George Morris, Century 21, blah, 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 blah. Look forward to reaching out to you. Hope you have a great day. Goodbye. And now you just added someone to your sphere. There is not one of you in here that if you made a commitment to your sphere, that you can't get it up to over 300. And by the way, if it's at 300, get it to 500. But there should never be a day that goes by that you haven't added one or two people to your sphere. And by the year is up, guys, just think about this. If you had two people a day for 220 workdays in a year, you'd have nearly 450 or 440 people in your sphere just from, hey, I felt a connection with Barnell. Hey, would you mind if I touch bases with you periodically, updated you on some conditions of the market and found out if you knew anything was thinking of buying or selling real estate? And all of a sudden, I've built a sphere. I've built a practice. Make sense? Yes. All right. Here we go. Here's the list. Okay. Uh, let's just start with it. It doesn't matter the order. Let's just start with uh, call quarterly. At minimum, a call quarterly. By the way, if you have 300 people, there's 20 workdays in a month. That means five a day. Call five a day. Bring five people some level of value a day. Next, let's mail something. All right. On mailing, I got to a point where I like to do it quarterly, but at minimum, I would tell you to snail mail, right? The actual postcard, whatever, mail it at minimum quarterly. Then I would tell you to email, gosh, with all the different things that are out there, whether that's Moxie or whether that's your own program, make sure that you've emailed at minimum monthly. Monthly campaigns, get your people on a campaign. All right, next, write down client, appreciation which exactly one month i think from today right isn't it well, exactly one month from today yeah. oh no april 3rd all right so 32 or 33 days from now you have a client appreciation client appreciation should happen at minimum two times a year all right whether you just participate in the pumpkin one or the easter one get committed to these client appreciations now, the ones over the years, is, as technology has evolved, these are the other things I've added into it. One, what I'm going to say and consider tell you is your top 50 people, see them face to face two times a year. Now, I don't care whether you want to do a Brian Buffini pop by. And just say, hey, I was in the neighborhood. I wanted to pop by and say, hello, how's the house? Right? But I would just make sure that no matter what, that you're making a really strong connection here in relationship to people. Whether it's meeting them at Starbucks or whether it's going to lunch or whether it's popping by their home. or But see the people. See them. And by the way, when I say this top 50, by the way, Actually, here's a stat for you. The average person knows how many, I've said this to a few of you, but I want to remind you, the average person knows how many people will buy or sell a piece of property per year. Anybody? Seven. Now, they may not buy or sell, but they know of seven people per year that are going to buy or sell real estate. Just want to point that out. 300 people times seven is 2,100 opportunities if you're connected to your people. Again, I go back to, boy, so important, but it doesn't seem that urgent. And so we just kind of ignore it. Don't be that agent. Don't be me. That's what I did the first five years of my business. Okay. Okay, next, five videos a day, a day. So meaning five times five, 25. 100 per week. Hey, Ashlyn, George Morris, Century 21. Hope you're doing great. Hey, I just want to touch bases with you, let you know how many homes are on the market. 
I uh, want to let you know what the average time on the market is. Hey, just want you to keep me in mind. I hope you're doing great. Hope the family's doing great. Talk to you later. That's it. Keep them, by the way, keep them under one minute. Five a day. And I think all of you have five minutes. Justin, even you might have five minutes. Five videos. Keep under one minute. That's because all the people who don't like Apple, you won't get your video out if they if they if you don't know whether they have an Apple phone or not. All right. Next, social media. Guys, it's pretty simple. It's not complicated. It's simply this: one for every three, meaning one real estate posting, one real estate posting per three posts. Picture of the sunset, picture of the lake, picture of my family, real estate, picture of my car, picture of me at Disneyland, picture of my dad, then one in real estate. People like try to complicate this thing at such levels, it's mind blowing to me. Three personal, one business. Three personal, one business. It's called social media. And some of you only put things regarding real estate, or sorry, only real estate. There's nothing social about that. And they ignore you. Your dumb listings you put up there, your dumb things that you sign up for where it shows listings that aren't even yours, great, whatever. And you may say, well, yeah, but it's, is it better? Be authentic, be real. By the way, when I call these people, I typically, as a general rule today, would have my social media open to look at what they've done. I'm going to create engagement. Now, when I talk about this call, you may have to text. But what I want is I want a minimum of five per day that you have engaged with. Engagement is the key. Every one of these things is about creating engagement. Now on social media, you go to their social media. Are all your people on your social media? Is all your sphere in your social media? And how do I get engagement? All of a sudden, let's just say Jackson comments or does a little double heart or whatever on a post of mine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to respond back. And if some people don't even know this because we try to limit our interaction, but I could just heart back if that makes sense what Jack said. But what I want is I want you to do a either a video back or a voice memo back. And I do that all the time in my Instagram, all the time. Hey, Isaac, so good to hear from you. I hope you're doing great. Thanks for the like on my post. Hope the family's doing well. Let me know if you need anything in real estate. You know, I'm always here for you. Done. That's called engagement. But the thing that I've also realized about all of this, and that's the, like, there's other little things you could do like slide aisle so that every single month you hit all of your guys. I might say, hey, Aubrey, hey, George Morris, I just wanted to leave you a quick message to all of my most influential and great clients like yourself. I just want to let you know, what. here's a little quick market update. Boom, 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 boom. I throw it on slide dial where I'm able to send it out to 300 people with a few push of the buttons. I don't act like I would just, oh, I'm sorry, I missed you. Like, you know that it's a robo dial. No. Hey, Aubrey, I just want you to know, I'm leaving this message to all my great clients. And I might even say, hey, in a mass little deal, but I wanted to give you some quick updates into the market. I'm going to bring... What? I'm going to bring what? Value. Value. All right. So as I'm, as I'm doing all of this, I'm looking to get engagement. I'm bringing value. I'm building a practice. I'm building something that's going to create massive cash flow and is a real asset. And so the challenge is, is that if you don't do this, you're going to always be on the hamster wheel of this business. Always wondering, where's your next deal? Gosh, maybe I need to call, you know, just listed, just sold. Maybe I need to go knock doors. Well, maybe I'm not saying you can't do that. I want you to do all that. And there is a time for that. And maybe it's for a long time of your career. But if there's a point in your career that you're not able to sit back and reap the benefits like the dentist, the CPAs, and the doctors who have built a practice, there's something wrong with the way you're building your business. There is something wrong because the thing is, is that, you guys are good people. And the one thing I was, I'll, I'll close with this. Yeah, we got to wrap here. But what I realized is this early on. There was an agent who had, I, I remember a long time ago, 
This is the agent, by the way, who was so frustrated with life that these were, this is his word, Jackson, you ready? He was, he, 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 he had a deal that went on. And Justin, you may remember this. And he said these words, if I don't get my commissions, I will burn down your house. And do um, you remember this? Do you remember this? There's an agent in our company. And Josh, I said, seriously, uh, oh my God. <laughs> oh, there, yeah, there she is. She was asking me a few days ago about this guy. There's another part to this story. So imagine this. So he threatens people. He's all freaked out because deals aren't happening. I asked him if he said that. And he goes, well, yeah. I said, whoa, you told someone you're going to burn down their house if they don't pay the commission? Well, I was a little frustrated. I said, okay, time out. You can't work anymore. But here's the other problem. I literally started my career, and people don't know this, but the very first day that I was at Coldwell Banker Premier, it's not what Coldwell Banker is today, nearly, what, 30 years ago, 29 years ago, I sit in what they call their fast start program, and who shows up is this guy. I've known this guy for, for again, nearly 30 years, and I remember sitting with him, and I was coaching him at this point, and I said, how many people are in your sphere? He told me 700 people. I went, Wow. That's great. And so how many deals, how many deals have you done with your sphere? This is a true story. He goes, oh, well, none. Well, make sure I'm clear. You, you, I call him. I call him every month. I call like five, 10 or 15 of them a day. I say, you've done not a single deal with your sphere. And he said, not one. Even nearly a year later. He still had not done any deals with his sphere. So this is my moral of the story to you. What I believe, working with your sphere, requires you to be a better agent. It just simply does. Because you can totally screw up on people you don't know. But boy, you screw up on your mom's best friend or your sister's best friend, or you mess up on your brother's transaction. Well, those become pretty problematic. So I've just realized that when I wanted to work with my sphere, and I give you numerous examples, like I did of this other agent who, you know, who knows, maybe they, I mean he was just turning and burning transactions. So he'd do one deal, but it would be so polarizing that they would never want to see him or do business with him again. And although he would add them to his sphere, they never repeated any business with him because they couldn't stand it. So I love the fact that working your sphere requires you to become a better person, a better person. Hey, so, George. Yep. I just want to say that who you're talking about is still the same person they were 30 years ago. They haven't grown or changed. Are. Or is it at all? I don't know. I have no idea where he is. I don't know. He was out for a while. I have no idea. I have no idea. All right. Any thoughts? Yeah. Thanks, Steph. I know it's kind of funny. And Stephanie just recently asked me like, Hey, who was that guy? And I don't know why it's been on my mind, but he, I still will never forget that he never had done a deal after he had built this sphere. Okay. So commitment. What I want from you guys is start building your sphere. I don't care if it's on a spreadsheet. I don't care if it's in uh, Moxie. I don't care if it's in market leader. I don't care if it's in top producer. I don't care. I, I prefer it to be beyond just handwritten in a, in a journal or a notebook. But start somewhere and organize this thing and get serious that there should not be a day that goes by that you're not calling, mailing, emailing, social media. You're doing the things that connect engagement and build a true practice for your business. There's not one of you in here that shouldn't be doing that. And you know, watch you sit there and just pound your head against more for sale or expired, just listed, just sold. And that doesn't mean don't call them. It just means make sure you add this as another major tool and component to your business. Okay. Any other thoughts? Ruby, anybody? Yeah, Aubrey. So I, I said that with Jessica Terry okay. a while ago. And we brought this up and she uh she said, you are calling your sphere. Let them know that this is a business call. Yeah. You're not saying, hey, how are the kids? Okay, anyways, do you have any business for me? You know, it's it almost seems kind of like, you know, backhanded or kind of you know, sketchy. Yeah. But when you are up front with them. And letting them know you're the professional and you're actually calling for, you know, for business. Um, and that way you, you, they see you as a professional and not Absolutely. a friend's call. 
So my opening is I have never really liked, and it's always been very uncomfortable for me to start off and say, hey, this is a business call. My opening line, Aubrey, is, hey, Aubrey, hey, it's George Morris, Century 21, or hey, it's George Morris, hey, I'm calling you about real estate. I've always just found that to be just a little bit. I'm calling you about real estate. And then I'm always okay with saying, hey, Aubrey, how are you doing? How, I, and then the Ford, right? We could, I'm not, we're not going to get into but family, occupation, recreation, dream. Hey, how's the family? How are you doing? And then because I'm good enough, I can then just transition with, with, with um, transitional statements. Transitional statements would be this, like with that being said, let me share with you or let me ask you. Okay. Hey, let me share with you, or let me ask you, Hey, let me share with you just a little bit of what's happening in today's marketplace, but I can easily go transition right over to saying, Hey, how's your family? Great. Saw your wonderful vacation. How was, it? Oh, it was awesome. Hey, with that being said, Hey, let me share with you just a few things that are happening in today's market. Hey, with that being said, let me ask you, do you know anybody who's thinking or buying or selling? Whatever the case is, is I'm okay. But my opening line is always, you know, hey, Matt, I was just want to share with you a little bit about what's going on in real estate. Before I jump into that, let me ask you, how's the family? How's the kids? How's, you know, we got great trips planned. How's work going for you? Gosh, pretty volatile marketplace. How's, how's, how's the job, right? Hey, I noticed on social media, you just went on a trip to Disneyland. How was that? Or a Disney cruise. Oh, it was awesome. Gosh, so I always want to be on one of those. How are they? Oh, they were great. Hey, with that being said, let me ask you. Or hey, with that being said, let me share with you. Let me share with you some of these great stats because I've prepared myself with some knowledge that you might not know. Now, I'm not going to say that, but that's going in my head, right? That's what's going to happen. So my opening has always been, I've changed it years ago. I just, I realized I have to say something I feel really comfortable with, but to the very point, by the way, I've talked about that for years with Jessica, way back when I first started coaching her, nearly, I think she said it was 18 years ago. And my, my point to you is, is just, I totally agree. Like, don't make it slimy and weird. So, hey, I'm calling you about real estate. If I sit business call in Utah, I think I'm looking for three people and we're going to join New Skin. I mean, that's what we think we're going to go do. So, and I mean, so, you know, and somebody like, well, is that a problem? Yeah, it's a problem. I'm trying to sell real estate. You want to sell MLMs? Knock yourself out. Um, but I would just tell you, I don't say business call. That's why I say real estate. Because one, everyone likes to talk about real estate. And I think business call you can ask me for money or are you going to ask me to go to, to an Amway convention? I mean, that's what you're thinking in the state of Utah. I know you are because I made enough calls. So I had to change it. I'm like, I'm not going to say that. All right. Hey, you have thoughts? Good, great comment, Aubrey. Okay. All right. Let's have a great day. It's rock and roll. Build that sphere.